Hey guys, it's Jenny, and today we are going to do my April wrap up. So, for the month of April, I was able to read six books. Some were part of my TBR, and some were not part of my TBR for my um, April reads. But hey, if I was able to read at least half of what I was hoping to read, that's great. So, the first book I was actually able to read for the month of April is Queen of Hearts by Colleen Oakes. Now, I was very excited over this book, especially after reading Wendy Darling by Colleen Oakes. I noticed, hey, she's gonna have Queen of Hearts out coming soon, and I was very excited to read it, and when I got my hands on it, I was disappointed, hoping for more, I'm not too sure yet. I don't know where where or how I feel about this book yet. I'm still kind of like trying to figure it out. I mean, I enjoy the book. I wish there was more excitement. I wish there was more um, more feels. I wish I felt more sorry for her. Um, I wish I felt more for the characters, but I didn't. But anyways, back to this book. This book is basically not a retelling of Alice in Wonderland, but actually this story is in regards to before Alice fell into the rabbit hole. This is about a princess by the name Dinah who's always looking for approval from her father, who is the king of Wonderland, and also, you know, dreaming of having a future with a boy she's in love with but soon find that she's going through this heartbreak and betrayal and is now in some sort of a political war against herself and her enemies. And it kind of shows the dark path that she is heading to becoming this evil queen of hearts. So, I mean, the synopsis kind of caught my attention. I was actually very excited for the story. I still am kind of very excited for the story because there will be a second part of this book. Maybe it just hasn't hooked me in yet. Um, I think it's more, I wish there was a little more character development maybe. Um, or maybe, I don't know. But I just feel like there's something missing. I just know. I don't know exactly what's missing in this book, but there is something missing and I'm hoping I'll be able to find it for the, in the second book. So I'm not giving up on the series. I will be getting the second book and I will be reading it and I'm going to be hoping for the very best. So that's my thought on this. The next book I was able to read was The Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. This is actually the first book of the Infernal Devices. And like I said in my TBR when I was telling you guys that I was currently reading it at that time, that this book is just 10 times better than the, the Mortal Instruments. And I still stand to that. Um, this series as a whole is just amazing. I mean, I read Clockwork Prince and Clockwork Princess all in one month. All of these three books from Cassandra Clare from the Infernal Devices I was able to read and they're not small books. These are pretty big books and I mean Will Herondale and um and what's gonna call it? And Tessa, and then there's James, and just like all the characters. I just, I love them all. And I think I wanna do a book discussion about this book, just to talk about it. Because I mean, that's why I have this booktube, right? Because I'm not really here to give you reviews on books. I don't like giving reviews on books like I mean I can tell you whether or not I like it but other than that I don't know how to really word it in a way it sounds nice you know like how you watch book reviews and like dang that, that girl really knows how to review books I'm not that girl or guy you know what I'm saying but 
I really would love to talk to somebody about the infernal devices. And so I will probably do a video. And I might actually do future videos on just me book talking about books I just currently read. And, um, you know, it's pretty much two cents and trying to get your insight and what you guys think. You know, just having like a discussion, that would be nice. But I can tell you right now, 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5, whatever is, maybe even beyond that. And I am hoping that the next three books in the, or actually the last three books of the Shadowhunter series, the uh, Mortal Instruments, will be just as good as Infernal Devices, if not even better. <sighs> I'm not going to hold my breath on that though, but I'm just really excited to finally finish this so I can work my way to the, um, the, the novellas that are on the ebook or, um, you know, on the e-readers, and then getting to my Lady Midnight, yeah, my Lady Midnight book, so that would be awesome. Also, the next book I was able to read, I read in between um, Clockwork Angel and Clockwork Prince, and that is Judy's Bloom, Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret. I have to say, I did enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it as much as I did when I was younger, but again, I was much younger versus me now. I mean, that was probably at least 20 years ago when I read this book. So, me then, me now. I remember squealing over certain parts of the book, and as I was reading them now, I just thought I was such an idiot back then. Like, seriously? What made me think that this was such a naughty book? This is not a naughty book. This is like about a teenager who complained a little too much. Not even a teenager yet. When I read this book 20 years ago, I felt like, I felt like this was a naughty book. Like I had to read this under my blanket in the middle of the night with the flashlight on. Um, and sometimes I would get a little excited over certain scenes or, you know, I'd giggle over certain scenes or get, a, you know, just like a little too happy. Um, but now, reading it as a 30-year-old with children of my own and having actually gone through puberty like Margaret here, um, I laugh. I laugh at myself to think that that I thought this was a naughty book, but um, no, I still do enjoy it. I do recommend to all the tweens out there who have yet to go through puberty, who has yet to go through junior high, um, because actually it's a really nice read about growing up. So, yes. Another book I was able to read was also another reread, and I was able to read this book between um, the Clockwork Prince and the Clockwork Princess, again, to give myself a little break. And that is The Silver Kiss by Annette Curtis Claus. And in this book, it has um, two short stories as well as The Silver Kiss. There is The Summer of Love and The, Kiss, and the Christmas Cat. Um, the Summer of Love, of course, is what happens before The Silver Kiss, which is Simon... Um, being alone in the 60s in San Francisco, and then in, of course, The Silver Kiss, where Simon and Zoe meet, and they kind of help each other, you know, act in revenge for, on behalf of Simon, and um, Simon, in a way, kind of helps Zoe, kind of confronts her, I don't know, her, I wouldn't say fear, maybe it was fear, of her mom dying of cancer and it's just it's a nice story I really enjoyed it um, especially because you know there's a girl who's a teenager who's going through the fact that her mom is dying of cancer and how she feels alone because her dad is always with her mom and never really with her like like she's being forgotten 
Um, and it was a little weird because I do work at a cancer um, center where we treat our cancer patients with chemo. I'm not per se a nurse, but I do coordinate um, our patient's chemo schedule. And it's funny how in this book, the nurses and the doctors didn't think it was a good idea for her to see her mom and that it would stress her mom out more being that she is dying um, versus now where we do encourage you know family members to be together um, as, much, as much as possible especially if it's terminal so I mean there's that kind of a difference um, but just watching her grow up and um, kind of overcome certain things was very nice it's a nice growing of age type of book um, or no sorry growing of age what the heck am I saying coming of age type of book as well this is like this is like um, how or what a lot of people are also saying this is the the Twilight book that should have been like Twilight should have been something like this this would have been nice uh, but of course way better than Twilight just way better than Twilight um, and then of course the third or the second short story comes after which is the Christmas cat and you kind of have to read the summer of love to kind of get the Christmas cat so but basically the Christmas cat is around the time when Zoe moves to San Francisco um, to go to school and she's coping the loss of of you know of her mom and so yeah again a really good reread I truly enjoyed it I'm glad I was able to find this book and reread this because it's been about 20 years since I've read this book so very glad that I was able to find it so yeah this was my April reads I am so glad that I had such a good um, month I was also um, uh, listening to audible for the and of course reading um, what do you call this gone with the wind because I have the book right here and I'm just slowly getting into it I'm like Towards the end, I think I have like 10% left of the book, and I, I just don't want it to end because I know how it's going to end, and I just feel like the ending is just so unfinished, and uh, I just don't want to get there. So I'm like in a little rut with this book. Like I haven't even opened the book in the past week and a half now. Um, because I just don't want to get to the end. This unfinished end. Um, but if you guys know any good books that had that has to do with Gone with the Wind, like either, maybe not retellings, but like authors out there who have actually tried to finish Gone with the Wind, like what their, what their thoughts of what might have happened, after Gone with the Wind ended, um, that would be great if you guys can comment down below on books you 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 know of and that are actually good, not like mediocre books that you know people tried, but like actually really good books that authors wrote about how Gone with the Wind either should have ended or will eventually end. So yeah. That's all I have to say. This is my April wrap wrap up, my book wrap up, my April wrap up. So until next time, I will probably see you hopefully soon. Until then, guys. Bye.